I'm Jens. Um, I've been keeping bees for a long time, uh, only using these for a short period of time. This is Apivar. This is uh, uh, a synthetic miticide treatment, and it's um, it's one of the uh, well. Right now, we don't have any resistance to it uh, that we know of in Saskatchewan. Uh, it's um, for a hobbyist. It's relatively inexpensive, and uh, and it works. And so this is kind of the recommended treatment right now for for, for mites. When you open up this package, the first thing you're going to do before you open it is you're going to read the directions very carefully. This is a fairly toxic substance, um, not just toxic to bees and mites, but also toxic to people. What you find when you work with anything that's toxic to animal life, it's generally uh, not good for any form of animal life. Uh, the, uh, the dose may be all right. One of the reasons that this works as a miticide treatment is that although it's harmful to bees, the dose required to kill the bees is much higher than it is to kill the mites. So you're going to read this label very carefully. What you're going to want to do when you read this label, one of the things you find out is you need chemical resistant gloves. So you can pick the package of those up from Canadian Tire or your local hardware store for about three bucks or something like that. Three bucks is a good investment when it comes to your health. One of the things you're also going to notice when you read the label on this is that even with using the gloves, you're not supposed to deal with more than 200 of these in a day. Actually, I think I'm, I'm going by memory. I'm just going to double check that because memory is not what you should be doing. You should be actually reading the label. <laughs> um, yeah. Do not handle more than 200 strips per person per day. That's wearing the gloves. So that gives you an idea of you know, the toxicity of this stuff. This is not good stuff for people either. All right, when you break this open, you're gonna find that there are, um, there are 10 plastic strips in here. Uh, another reason you wanna use gloves is it's actually kind of tough to break those strips apart. They're kind of, they kind of have like little plastic tabs. And so it takes a bit of, uh, takes a bit of effort to actually rip those strips apart. get a good grip. The gloves are important then. Don't try to just be, you know, uh, doing it with one hand and, and uh, see if you can do it that way. You're going to get, you need one strip. Sorry, I got to read. My hive is very small and so one strip does my entire hive. But I know that one strip doesn't do one hive of these. Right. So it's one strip for five frames of bees. At this time of year, when you're you know in fall, you should have nice strong hives going into winter. So when you look through each of your gaps uh, between the combs, they should be full of bees. If they are, then you're going to use two strips per brood box. So in other words, in this setup here, four strips. Out and it's got a little, um, I don't know how you describe it, it's got like a little triangle tab at the top. And it, it doesn't, it's not really, um, it, it's just a thing that you pick. It's fairly stiff. So you're just going to kind of gently wiggle that strip down between the, the uh, combs there. I say gently because you don't know whether your queen's in there or not. You don't want to squish her. <coughs> gently wiggle that down in there. When it comes to the top, just stick the tab out so it's catching and do the same so you can have one here but one there. You can do the same thing down your bottom brood box. Set it back up. Label directions. Six weeks, 42 days is how long that needs to stay in there. Part of the magic of that is that's complete brood cycles of uh, worker brood 
So any mites that were under the calf brood uh, are coming out um, uh, and being exposed to this strip uh, at least, hopefully at least uh, once. This strip works by contact. So the reason you want it in the center is as it gets colder and the bees are, um, are clustering tighter, this strip isn't working if it's over on the side and there's no bees there. They actually have to be coming in contact with this strip for the mite for the mite aside for the apivar to work. The other magic of that 42 days is we don't want to leave the strips in there all winter long because then we're potentially uh, creating apivar resistant mites. So when you read about various mite treatments, they are um, you'll read about the efficacy rate. Apivars in the high 90s. Let's say it's 97% for just for the sake of argument. What that means is that 3% of those mites now have developed some resistance to apivar, or they've exhibited some resistance. Those 3% are the ones that are breeding in and amongst the colony and replicating. So the next time you go in there, they have a little higher resistance to apivar. This is one of the reasons why uh, we've been having such an issue with Varroa treatments, why we developed uh, uh, mites that are resistant to apistan, that group of chemicals. We really would prefer to use what you call integrated pest management, which is alternating treatments so that you, uh, you don't end up developing a, a, a strain of mites that are resistant to apivar. We've been, I don't know, how long we had apistan resistance? About 10 years, 15 years, something like that? It's been a while. So nobody's been using apistan in Saskatchewan for a while uh, because of that. And uh, I heard that some people were trying it again, thinking that, you know, now the mites would no longer be resistant because we haven't been using that chemical. Still resistance. So this isn't a problem that goes away. We want to be very careful not just for our health, but for the sake of the industry and our hives, how we use this. So don't go leaving your strips in your hives. 42 days later, you go in, you take them out. At this time of year, we don't need to put honey supers on, but one of the other things you'll see on the label is if you're putting these in in the spring, you have to wait, uh, it's either a week or two after you take your ships out before you put honey supers on. Two weeks? Um, that's not a problem at this time of year, obviously. But what is a problem at this time of year is snow and cold weather. So we don't like to be cracking our hives when there's a foot of snow on the ground or it's minus 20. So that means you have to do a little bit of a counting backwards exercise. If you're gonna be pulling these strips out Thanksgiving, count backwards, that's right now you're putting these in. If you're only putting these in at Thanksgiving, you count forward six weeks, that means you're basically taking them out at Christmas time. Christmas time is not really the ideal time to be cracking the lid of your hive and pulling mite strips out. It's not good for your bees. However, if you're doing that, the good news is you might not be developing mite resistance or uh, apivar resistant mites because you're probably going to kill the bees and the mites completely. <laughs> I think that's about all I have to say about apivar. Um, there are lots of stuff, there's lots of stuff on the internet about mite treatments. Um, when it comes to, there's people looking for organic treatment, there's, you know, non-synthetic miticides, all sorts of things. Stick with what is proven to work. So, for instance, I was commenting with a guy recently about um, using... Uh, icing sugar as a, as a treatment. Uh, there's been some literature written on this um, and there's a fellow down in California who actually did uh, uh, his own uh, field research on this. His conclusion was does icing sugar make a difference to mite populations? Short answer, yes. Is it enough of a difference that that can be your only uh, method of dealing with mites? No. Very definite no. Uh, talking to Jeff Wilson, our provincial agriculturalist, some people have tried to use icing 
sugar up here had some very bad results. Uh, lost a lot of hives doing that. So stick to what works well. Um, we don't want to, as hobbyists, we don't want to be creating problems for the industry. We don't want to be killing our bees off or creating a problem. So stick to what works, but also rotate your, your treatments and your methods so that you're not, um, you're not creating something, a mite that's resistant to one particular uh, uh, type of treatment method. So if we have